Well, soccer fans, our preseason previews continue on with our hometown team, the Chicago Fire. And just because they're a hometown team doesn't mean we give them the hometown treatment. In fact, we probably treat them just a little bit worse because of that. Uh, being a Chicago sports fan my whole life, I'm kind of used to uh, mediocrity or failure. And uh, unfortunately, it's where the Chicago Fire have found themselves the last couple of seasons. We got a new owner. We got a new coach. We got a new GM. We got a new stadium. Mike, the Chicago Fire are an expansion franchise once again. Pretty much, it is. It is almost like an expansion uh, franchise with the fire. They're they're moving down back back to Soldier Field uh, from Bridgeview, and you know it's it's really exciting time uh, for the fire because they're totally rebuilt. Houtman is out. Uh, the new ownership in Mansueto is uh, you know is is rolling along here slowly but surely, and uh, it's it's definitely an exciting time uh, for Chicago Fire and their fans. And you remember the last time Chicago was an expansion team, how that season turned out for them, right? Pretty good. Yeah, that's right. MLS Cup champs. So let's take a look at the roster that they've built this offseason and, and see if it has any more similarities to, uh, to an expansion side, which it kind of does because they added a lot of homegrown players, a lot of young players, uh, Nicholas Lanina, Mauricio Pineda, uh, a couple of their homegrowns, Alvaro Medran, a uh, free transfer, Connor Sparrow, their goalkeeping free transfer, and Bobby Shuttleworth, uh, free transfer. Shuttleworth, where did he come from, Mike? I, I'm spacing on his prior club. Yeah, he uh, he had been with the New England Revolution for a while. Uh, he was also in Minnesota in their expansion year. I can't remember where he was last year, um, but uh, he's you know he's back in the league and with the Fire. Right, and it looks to be that they're building some goalkeeping depth. That was a bit of an issue for them last season. Uh, so hopefully they can stabilize the goalkeeping position and, and kind of work out their back line a little bit too. Uh, other players on the way in, Robert Barrick, their DP transfer from St. Etienne over in France. Uh, Miguel Angel Navarro, a transfer from Deportivo La Guardia. Uh, Wyatt Amsberg in a trade from Minnesota. Boris Sekulik, a transfer from Gornik Zabrze. Uh, I think he, that's in the Slovenian league, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I think I am mistaken. But anyway, um, and then finally, just announced today, Ignacio Aliceda has been brought in as uh, a DP for the Chicago Fire. He's an Argentine youth international and uh, looks to have an immediate impact on this Fire roster. And they need it because they are out. Bastion Schweinsteiger, Dax McCarty, Grant Lillard, Diego Campos, Stefan Cleveland, Nicholas Gaetan, Alexander Katai, Christian Martinez, Armando Moreno, David Ousted, Richard Sanchez, Marcelo, and Raheem Edwards. So all the big names that the Fire have acquired in the last two to three-ish years who were supposed to bring them back to the top of the MLS, gone. Everyone's gone. Gaetan, Katai, Schweinsteiger, McCarty, uh, Marcelo, Edwards. These were the guys who were supposed to keep the fire atop the Eastern Conference. And unfortunately, uh, they're out because they did not get the results. Um, now, Mike, let me, let me ask you a little something about the roster build of Chicago here. Because I know you've talked about bringing in uh, a Latino or a Hispanic player because it plays so well with just the cultural makeup of Chicago. Some of the fans are upset that they had brought in guys like Barrich and Sekulik uh, as opposed to really pulling out all the stops to grab Pizarro or Pulido, who ended up signing with Sporting Kansas City. Now, is that tempered a little bit by getting Ignacio Aliceda? Is this just kind of wild speculation? Or, or do you think the fire are just you know doing what everyone else is doing? They're just doing it in Europe instead of South America. You know, it's uh, <clears throat> it's an interesting take on this uh, that that people, you know, I, I think that some people won't like to hear it, um, but they're they're really going towards the new MLS, right? And and that is getting these guys who, right, as you said, you know, through South America, they're just doing it through Europe. They're going after guys that are young. Um, you know, and they can, you know, especially with Aliceda, he's definitely young. Uh, you know, they can bring these guys in and then flip them later for more, you know, for more profit. Um, personally, I'm a bit disappointed because I wanted to see them sign a big name guy. 
I think that there is, I think there's positives to that, that the fire are missing out on. One being the fact that you're going to put butts in the seats in the year that you're moving to Soldier Field and you need to fill a 60,000 seat stadium. Uh, Number two is, you know, look, it's bringing in a guy like a Pizarro or, you know, something like that. He's going to be successful in MLS this first year and probably for a couple of years. Right. So you're you're going to get the benefit of great play as well as butts in the seats where, uh, uh, you know, some of these guys that they've, that they've brought in, uh, Barrett, Robert Barrett, uh, you know, Boris Sekulik, they're good signings. They're good players. Are they going to do that? Probably not. And if they, they were still out in Bridgeview and they weren't rebranding and they didn't change the logo and go after this huge new marketing campaign and all that, then those signings would be fine. You're going to get a good on field product. And, and by far winning is extremely important if if they're not winning, they're not going to fill Bridgeview. They're not going to they're not going to fill Soldier Field. But if they are winning, they're going to the fans are going to show up. Every, in, in any sports, we know that works that way. So um, I think that they're doing it the right way. I think the fans are just a little bit upset that they didn't get that big name guy uh, that that they were kind of hoping for. And when you have three open designated player spots in MLS, usually you're going to get one that you're like, oh, yeah, I like that signing. That's the guy I want. So that's my thoughts on that. So Robert Barrich, their first DP signing this season, he's not big enough for you. A 28-year-old Slovenian international in the prime of his career is not uh, not big enough for you, Mike. Uh, no. 122 goals and 333 uh, career appearances for the top flights in Slovenia, Austria, and France. That's not big enough for you, Mike? This no. guy had 34 goals in uh, about two, two, three seasons over for St. Etienne. I mean, he's been playing with the Slovenian national team since, I think, U17. The guy was doing shots of Malort in his <laughs> intro video, Mike. Is this not big enough for you? Like, what, what more? The shots of Malort <laughs> is a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> thing. Uh, that was great marketing, and, and I, I really liked it, and I'm sure all the fans loved it. But no, it's not big enough, Nick. You need somebody the fans recognize, or the not not so you know not really the fans would recognize. You need somebody that you know if if conversation gets started up about it, somebody who doesn't really follow soccer is going to know that. I follow soccer a lot, and I had never heard of Robert Barrich until he started to become rumored to be signed by the Fire. Uh, you know, people don't know about them. Yes, you missed what I said about these guys have done extremely well uh, with the signings. They're going to put a good on-field product together. So, yes, us diehard fans that are going to be there no matter what, that's that's good for us because you're still going to get a good product. But for the bringing the fans in from a marketing perspective and putting butts in the seats, not so much. Yeah, well, like you said, winning cures everything. So it hopefully does. Barrich can can continue his fine form coming over from league un and uh you know catapult the fire and maybe a top four spot or something like that and and yeah we'll, we'll get the butts and seats to go see these uh these bright new strikers in the league but you're right if you want to compare the chicago fires top dp to those around the league uh robert barrich carlos villa robert barrich joseph martinez robert uh barrich or Eber over in NYC, uh, you know, uh, similar names like that. Robert Barrich or Polito in Kansas City, who the fire were, were going after as well. So just when you make those little comparisons there, maybe Barrich just is an unproven talent. Maybe he is as good as most of the other top DPs in the league. Maybe he's going to find the net 20 times or so this season and, and really become a star of the league. But we just don't know. You're right. He's not that household name. He wasn't that big signing. He's not, you know, one of these high rumored guys who are in all the soccer tabloids. So we'll we'll see what he can bring. I I guess we have to wait and see, unfortunately, Fire fans. Um, But as far as their second DP signing, Aliceta, 19-year-old Argentinian player, predominantly a winger. Uh, So we'll see how he fits into uh, the lineup here on how Rafael Wicke likes to play. I mean, he played with the... The U.S. I'm sorry. Wiki coached the U.S. under 17 team last year, so you know they had some good wingers on that team. Uh, Tim Weah, get healthy quick. Come on back. We miss you. Um, we, we've seen guys like that, and 
I'm pretty sure he had similar guys when he was coaching over in Austria. So he knows how to use them. Uh, it seems like a great signing, uh, and hopefully they can keep him around for a couple, three years. And then if the Fire are in contention, if they're looking good, spend that money in the summer transfer window, Mike. Absolutely. Uh, the guy's got experience, you know, playing for the Argentina under 19s as well as the U 23s. So, uh, you know, he's a youth Argentinian national team player and those guys, you gotta be good. You gotta be really good to, to be on those teams. It's, it's not the same as the United States or Canada. And we're more, we're what we're more familiar with. Uh, Argentina is, is a whole different ball game. So, I think, uh, you know, he is more of a left winger. That's kind of his primary position. He can also kind of play striker uh, and right wing at times. But uh, 19 years old, he's young, and he's going to take up that young designated player spot. Uh, a great a great football soccer signing, right? I mean, this is a, especially when you're talking about the new MLS. You bring over a young kid like this who, you know, the the, the soccer world is at his feet. And he could have a couple great seasons with Chicago, no you know, intended, and they can, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and they can, uh, you know, they can, they can flip them for, you know, 10, 12, 15, 20 million, you know, to, to a club over in Europe. And now all, you know, you're, you're, you're making out a ton of money and you can reinvest that into the club. Um, but as you say, the key is to, to win those games and get the butts in the seats. And uh, so it's definitely a good one. Uh, also a good marketing piece there. Whoever their, their marketing people are pretty, pretty darn good. Cause it was a good uh, intro for him as well. When he was uh, the, the signing was announced today, they were talking and they had a bunch of tweets uh, go through. It was like somebody was walking in there looking at their phone. And then uh, there was a, a bunch of tweets like, when are you going to announce Aliceta? Is Aliceta coming? When's Aliceta coming in? And then all of a sudden it like looks up and uh, you see on the Chicago theater board, you know, welcome Ignacio Aliceta. So, uh, Pretty cool marketing piece there, so go check that tweet out if you haven't seen it, uh, Fire fans. But uh, yeah, I, I'm excited about those, you know, those two DPS as much as I can uh, for wanting to see a big name. But I'm not, I'm not the general manager and I'm not the owner, so I'll leave it at that. Well, then maybe you'll just dis- maybe you'll disagree with me then on who I think the Fire's most important player is going to be because I think it is going to be their DP Robert Barrich. If you remember last year, the Fire in my mind's biggest problem was finishing scoring opportunities. They had plenty of chances. They, they were creating a number of chances, but they couldn't take advantage of those, and it was coming back to bite them late in games. They were they were giving up a lot of late draws. They were giving up a lot of late goals to lose the game in the last several minutes, You know, as they say, sna- snatching defeat from the jaws of victory kind of thing here. So if Barrich can convert some of these chances that the Fire are getting... I guess assuming they can still create them without, you know, 80% of last season's roster, uh, which they should be able to. Uh, if he can convert a few early goals, that'll put the fire in a really good position. Uh, the defense won't be under so much pressure, and uh, I, I think they'll be able to excel. So that's that's my take on most important player. Uh, agree? Disagree? Maybe one of their youngsters can be an important player for him. What do you think? Well, they've got a lot of young talent on the team, so they're going to need to, uh, you know, they're going to need the young guys to step up. That's for sure. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, Madron, Alvaro Madron could kind of come into that picture as a, as a thought to be the most important player, uh, especially, you know, the, the kind of in the midfield. And, you know, I don't know if he's going to be the number 10 or if they're going to leave that to Mihailovic. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what exactly the plans are there, but I think Madron coming in as a new signing uh, is important as well as, you know, Jordi Mihailovic. He, this is uh, kind of his season to really take the next step. He's been called up to the USMNT. Uh, he needs to... He needs to take that next step, and if he can do that, that would definitely help the Fires' chances out for making the playoffs and, uh, you know, possibly even winning a game. So uh, I I can't really argue with Barrich, though. He is the main. He, as of right now, unless they come up with some other, you know, huge DP signing, ah, please, uh, you know, then (laughs) he's going to be the guy that – that's going to score the goals and they'll need him to score the goals period. If he doesn't score the goals, you know, 15 to 20 goals, it's not going to happen for the fire this season. So I'll, I'll agree with you, Nick. Oh, well, thank thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Um, as far as the breakout youngsters, the fire have six homegrowns on the roster. So 
you know, if you take the glass half full approach, they're doing something right. They're signing their homegrowns. If you take the glass half empty approach, it means their scouting department is terrible and they have to rely on their homegrowns. So I, I, I don't know. Chicago fans, let, let us know where you fall on, on that side of things. Um, but there's a lot of young defenders on the team. Uh, and maybe that's the plan. Develop your young defenders at home, sell them, and then spend your money on the strikers from abroad. Anyway, looking at some of these defenders, you got Mauricio Pineda, who's 22 years old, former captain of the North Carolina Tar Heels. So despite my Illini, University of Illinois disdain for all things uh, Tar Heel Blue, uh, the, it's an excellent program. So the fact that their captain is now on the fire roster uh, could have uh, could have some impact there. Jeremiah Goodjar, who's a uh, academy product from the Chicago Fire, played at Indiana University, another homegrown signing. IU, as you know, another national powerhouse on the college soccer scene. Uh, he could get minutes. He already started a, a handful of games last season, and he's what I liked. Uh, he has what I like as far as you know a, a young signing, and this is something I talked about when we did our Super Draft preview. Uh, he played at a big program. He put up numbers at a big program, uh, such as part of the defense led the league in shutouts, in 2018, and only 13 goals allowed that season. Wow. So he is a major part of a major unit at a major program. Uh, so I think he's got a lot of what it takes to succeed at the MLS level. And then, of course, Miguel Angel Navarro, a 20-year-old defender from Venezuela, who already has 60 appearances in Venezuelan top flight. He's already been there about two wow. seasons, and he's only 20. He's played for the Venezuela youth national team, so it wouldn't surprise me at any to see any one of these three guys get a lot of minutes at the fire back line and become a more household Chicago fire name. So all of that being said, Mike, what do you think our starting 11 is going to be? You know, what other players are you expecting to step up? And then let's get into some predictions here with the fire. Yeah. So uh, the coach wiki had used a four, two, three, one with the youth national team, as you alluded to earlier uh, in the, in the episode here. Um, but he's used a four, three, three in the preseason, the latest preseason game against the Rapids, uh, even though they did play TFC today and beat them to nothing, but I don't know what formation they used in that one. Um, I'm going to go with Shuttleworth, Shuttleworth and goal. I think, uh, you know, Cronholm could could be the guy. I don't know if they brought Shuttleworth in for, uh, you know, for some competition in camp. I, I'm i not a big fan of Cronholm, so I'm going to go with Shuttleworth to take the starting position. Played for Minnesota United, so he was backing up Manone uh, wow. last season and then ended up going on loan to Sacramento Republic. Obviously, behind you know, he was behind Manone, goalkeeper of the year for Minnesota. So... Um, he he could could keep that starting spot in Chicago. As far as the back line, I'm looking at Bronico, Kappelhoff, Calvo, and Bornstein. Those were the four starters in that preseason game against the Rapids. Uh, but Bornstein, we know, his best days are long behind him. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me to see Sokolic come in and take over that starting spot once the season begins and the games really matter. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me to see Navarro or Gutjar, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Obviously, that's not our strong suit here on this American Soccer Podcast. Uh, you know, come in and maybe take some time away from Bronico. But I'm pretty sure Kapelhoff and Calvo are your center back pairing that you're going to see most of this season, assuming they stay in good health. And then as far as uh, the midfielders, they started Mihailovic, Madron, and Azira in that game against Colorado though I fully expect Pineda to come in and, and replace Azira at some point. And then how about the strikers, Mike? There's a lot of striking talent here. Who do you think uh, steps up and, and gets the nod from Wiki? Yeah, so if, if he's in the 4-3-3, uh, it's definitely going to be uh, Barich, Frankowski, and Sapong. Those are the three top strikers. Uh, however, Collier is definitely, uh, you know, having a great preseason. Guy keeps scoring goals. I think he, this yeah. is, he scored again today uh, for his third goal in three games or something like that. So he's uh, he's in the conversation to kind of back those guys up. But Barich, Frankowski, and Sapong are, are going to be the, the starting three if he goes with that formation uh, come opening day. Right. So as far as predictions go, just to kind of let the fans know, the way I kind of look at the predictions, you've either got like teams who are fighting to win the conference, teams who are solidly in the playoff race, and teams who are fighting to make the playoffs. I, I see the Chicago kind of in that in that second one where they, they've got a really good shot at making the playoffs. I don't see them competing with Atlanta or New York City. Uh, 
again, it's a very new roster, new coach, new ownership, new lots of things. That, like I said, they're an expansion franchise. So similar to what we talked about with Miami, uh, I think they, they're going to be – their ceiling is probably that fifth or sixth seed in the conference, and then you win a playoff game and, and just see what kind of run you can go on. Then again, the floor – I mean, we, we've got a new roster. We've got some unproven DPs here in the league. we got uh, some old guys on defense and some really, really young guys on defense. Uh, we got a goalie situation. We're not 100% sure who, who's going to be winning that regularly. If all of this falls apart, if Wiki doesn't make the adjustment to MLS, if, if Mansueto go, gets in over his head and maybe starts trying to coach from the owner's box, they could miss the playoffs and just like every other Chicago team say, oh, you know, what? we're actually a lot better than this. Um, we, we'll, we'll be fine for next year. We don't have to do anything. You know, the, the false sense of security every Chicago team has had. I hope the fire don't get it too. Uh, so that's kind of my thoughts on it, Mike. What, what, are, what are your predictions for Chicago this year? Yeah, I agree. They're, you know, they, I don't think they're in that top level with the Atlanta's, New York City's, Toronto FC's. Uh, I think they're in that that next group that's going to be fighting for those playoff spots. And, you know, I think they are good enough to get in there. Uh, possibly, I, I think they could even win win a game, uh, but that's if everything goes extremely well. Uh, again, uh, I can't, you know, I can see this team falling apart quickly. Uh, they, you know, they they really don't have a sh- a full squad yet that's really had a lot of time together. So it it could be a slow start to the season. I'd hate to see that, especially with the new move to uh, to Soldier Field. Uh, but hopefully. They will do better than I expect them to. And, uh, yeah, first game for them is at Seattle. Uh, so let's go play at uh, at CenturyLink Fields to the uh, reigning MLS Cup champions in their barn on opening day. Uh, All the more reason Chicago's an expansion team. Miami's got to go to LAFC. <laughs> Chicago's got to go to Seattle. Chicago's an expansion team this year. I stand hey, by There that. you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so March 1st, uh, it's going to be on Sunday afternoon, uh, nationally televised game on ESPN. But big news for the fire today there, I believe it was today, maybe even yesterday, they announced today that uh, they signed a contract with WGN to do 24 regular season games or 27 regular season games on WGN over the air. No cable needed, no ESPN plus subscription needed. They're going to be able to be seen by everyone in Chicago who has an antenna or a TV. Well, with a TV. So, hey, there you go. Good news for uh, for the fire. And with that, thanks for joining us for our Chicago Fire season preview here for 2020. And next up, we will talk about the Portland Timbers.